you're alive. You rule, you reign, you said you're coming back again, and I know that you will, and all the earth will sing your praises, and all the earth will sing your praises. Aren't you thankful that he's coming back? Amen. So happy. Sing this out today. You took, you take our sins away, oh God. You gave, you gave your life away for us. You came down, you saved us cross our hearts are changed because of your great love you live you die you said in three days you would rise you did and you're alive you rule you reign you said coming back again and I know that you will and all the earth will sing your praises and all the earth will sing your praises Lord we sing your praises this morning sing it out to you Lord sing it you took you take our sins away oh god you give you gave your life away for us you came down you saved us through the cross our hearts are changed because of your great love you live you die you said in three days you would rise as you did and you're alive you rule you reign you said you're coming back again and i know that you will and all the earth will sing your praises earth will sing your praises. Good morning, church, and welcome again as we worship in the Word. I want to encourage you to read the update to see what's going on, people to pray for, uh, ministries to be involved in, some areas to be encouraged by. So I just want to uh, make sure you re read the update as well as listen to the message. I'm coming to you realizing that I only have two more times to share with you through uh, preaching and on the video. Um, it's my pleasure to be here to open up God's Word and to just ask Him to use me, use His Word and His Spirit to speak to our hearts. And we hope the messages have been beneficial to you, especially in those very difficult days when we were unable to get out at all. Uh, but also now, some of you are still unable to attend worship uh, because of health reasons. I hope that's the only reason that you're not coming. I think um, many pastors have shared with me that this is a time that people have sort of slacked off. They could be here, they're not here, and I hope that doesn't describe you. Sometimes we look for excuses why not to come instead of reasons why we should come. Uh, but you uh, do what you think you need to do health-wise for protection of yourself and others. Uh, but for the rest of you, you need to be faithful and be an, an active part of the fellowship of God. I hear a lot of people talking about, well, I can love Jesus without going to church. Well, I beg to differ. I'm going to talk today about a subject that's dear to my heart, and I believe it's dear to the Lord's heart, and that is His church. And we'll be looking at um, whose church it is. I remember one time reading an article uh, from a young lady, and she had titled it something like, I love my church. And her theme was, quit being so negative, quit being so critical, quit being so down, uh, quit trying to write about and talk about all the bad things and how we need to change it. Just get involved and love it and change it. Be a part of the change. 
And that's how I feel. Sometimes people just get down on church. Hey, I think you ought to be up on Jesus. If you're up on Jesus, you'll be up on the church. You know why? Because the church is the bride of Christ. I've learned this thing. You don't talk about somebody else's bride. and They can, but you can't. And, and so we need to make sure that uh, we love not only the Lord, but if we love the Lord, we love His bride because He loves His bride. And when you love Him, you need to love what He loves. So church, let's be the church. Let's go to church, but be the church. And that's what I want to talk to today about. Uh, I could talk uh, about it for hours because it's so uh, important, so valuable. It's uh, a lot of struggles, a lot of difficulties. And uh, I know about them and you know about them as well. But the Bible teaches us that, that the Lord Jesus loved the church and he gave himself for her. And so how much more should we be involved in helping to make the church what God wants us to be? So we'll be doing that in just a moment. But let me just say to some of you who are fairly new to our church and COVID hit and you haven't been able to be back, I hope you'll uh, come back when you're able to and uh, you'll find it be a, a, a church that loves the Lord, stands on his word. We're not perfect but we strive to obey the Lord. I've often said, if you find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll mess it up. And another uh, comment, excuse me, a comment that I make about church is um, if you, um, you're looking for a church, you, you don't look for a church without problems. You won't find one. But look for one that deals with its problems in a godly manner, according to God's Word. Not, that's not only in the area of discipline, and obedience, but also love and forgiveness and encouragement as well. Sometimes people say, well, you know, God wants us to be loving and kind. And well, I agree, we should be. But you know, sometimes when you think about the Lord Jesus, he might take us to the woodshed. He might be, as he has done twice in scriptures, uh, very uh, filled with a lot of righteous anger toward how people were treating the house of God. Sometimes God does correcting work. Other times he does perfecting work. So we need to respond to his call, his leadership. What does Jesus say about the church? What's his idea about the church? And what should our attitude be toward the church? And we'll look at that in a few moments. But I want you to know I love the church, and I love this church, Hampstead Baptist Church. You've been wonderful for 33 years. Um, to those, again, who are fairly new, I would encourage you to come. If I was bringing my family to this area to live, I would look down at this church and I'd look and check it out and say, you know what? This is a church that loves the Lord, stands on His Word, and desires to please Him. So that's the kind of church you need. That's the kind of church we strive to be and I trust we'll strive to continue to be. Why don't you join us and be part of it? to love the Lord Jesus, to stand on His Word, and to be obedient, doers of the Word, and not hearers only. Okay, that's not the message. That was just my introduction to say, God bless you. I've enjoyed being here, and have a, have a great time as you continue to be in fellowship here at this church. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, as we talk about the church. Let the church be the church. And there are four things I want to point out in this scripture as we read in Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into the holy temple of in the Lord, in whom also we are being built together for the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Th those are a few short verses, but it's packed with meaning. So we're going to walk through that. A number of years ago, I had preached a message at uh, my former church on my very last Sunday, and it was called the Block Sermon. And I used different um, blocks, different sizes, different colors of them, um, it wasn't the best construction that you'd ever see. I didn't sand them down like I needed to, but um, they gave they brought it across the point. And this block sermon was building uh, a church physically, so you could see the the wood that represented the church, and then the meaning behind it. And I started off with uh, a cross, a white cross, and I would lay it down on the corner, and that is the cornerstone. That's exactly what we see here. 
uh, in verse 20. And having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So the first point is we find in this scripture the idea of the foundation. We see that in verse 20. The foundation of the church, first of all, is the cornerstone. In times past, a cornerstone was used to put the weight of the rest of the building. So you make sure that the cornerstone was very secure, very strong, and reliable. Today, a cornerstone is basically used to put a date on, or maybe a building was dedicated to someone. So more of an aesthetic purpose or a purpose of identifying the building. But a cornerstone means everything rests on that corner. In addition to that is the foundation, which is the teaching of the prophets and the apostles. So then I would lay down a couple of pieces of wood that would represent the apostles and the teachings. Actually, it's the Word of God the teaching of the Word of God. So we find that the foundation of the church is the Word of God and the person of the Lord Jesus. If you don't give high marks to the person of Jesus and the Word of God, you're going to have a weak church. That's why you have so many denominations, mainline denominations. I mean, they've gone south. They've gone sour. They're, they're not very powerful at all. It's almost like a spiritual social club. Uh, they get together, they do some things, they have some bake sales, um, they'll do some good projects. I'm not saying it's all bad things they do, but for what they've call, been called to do, they're no longer doing it, and that is to be doers of the Word of God. You can't do the Word if you don't believe the Word and rely on it on your personal life, but also for the life of the church as well. That's where we get our foundation. That's where we get our marching orders, the guidance that we need. And so you, you need to look for a church that's a word church. It doesn't have to be in their name, per se, like uh, Hampstead Bible Church. But it means that you have a church that declares that the teaching of the Bible is the Word of God. And clearly, the theme of the Bible is the Lord Jesus. The main character is the main, uh, the, the, the main character is the Lord Jesus. The theme is God's love and redemption of mankind through the main character is the Lord Jesus. One villain, that's the devil, but also one aim, that's the glory of God. And that's the purpose of the church. That Not that we would do some social event, not that we would uh, get involved in some activities to help people, and we ought to be doing helping people. But our main focus needs to be for the glory of God. And we can never do that if we're not planted on solid foundation. The second point I want to mention is the idea of uh, the church being not the foundation, but also there's another word down in verse 21, in whom the whole building being fitted together. So what is the church? Well, the church, first of all, in chapter 3, verse 15, you find it's a family. And, and you know, families ought to get together. We don't always get together. I don't mean just physically, but Get along, maybe is a better word. We get together, but also we come together, but we need to get along as well. And sometimes there's a problem. You need to work through the problem. We find in Ephesians, uh, excuse me, Philippians chapter 4, Paul said about Yodia and Syntyche, help these ladies get along. But they're both beneficial, but they're not getting along. They need to get along. So you need to work these things out. So, so it is in the fellowship of, of the church. That's the idea behind here, fit together. Let me read for you Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. From whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working, by which every part does its share. So you have a picture here of a building coming together and everyone doing their part. Well, now, back to my illustration of the uh, block sermon. Now, we have the cornerstone. We have the foundation. Then we begin to build the church. And it's the Lord Jesus who builds his church. That's why when someone wants to join our church, we ask them a question. Has there been a time in your life where you had prayed to receive Christ, to ask him to forgive you of all of your sin, and to come into your heart to be your Lord? 
Another phrase you could use is what is used in John chapter 1, to receive him. Who is him? Who's the him? The Lord Jesus. Jesus saves. He's the Lord. He is the Lord that saves. So you receive the one who saves. You receive him as your Lord. He saves you, forgives you, cleanses you, and then takes control of your life as you walk in obedience. So that's the idea of adding to the church, those who are being saved, and it's the Lord Jesus that builds his church. He builds his church with people, living stones. As Peter says, we are living stones, not dead stones. We talk about the, uh, the church being the family of God. It's the bride of Christ. It's also the body of Christ. And, and, and we are dead without him, but we should be alive with him. He gives life to the church. And we are empowered by his spirit. We're motivated by his life, his example. And only by his grace can we be what he wants us to be. So we see that we build on the foundation, but we need to be fit together so the Lord can build his church. So on my block sermon, I would add a, another green block, small green block. That means here's a, someone who professes Christ as Lord and Savior. And then um, green means he needs to grow. He's alive. He's growing. And then I'd put another one. Then I'd put a small one, meaning maybe a, a teenager. Then I'd have a few as a nursery, thinking we need to reach these kids, take care of them, love them, sacrifice some time to minister to them and bring them up that they might know the Lord Jesus to become part of the church. Now, they're in the church building. They come to church services, but they're not really part of the church, the true church, until they get saved until they give their life to Christ, to be born again. That's why we emphasize it in Sunday school, Bible school, Awana club, uh, at home, to, to lead your children to where, where they're at a point to receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Until then, they need to be here. I mean, you, you take them to the doctor, don't you? You take them to school, don't you? You take them to other places they should be or enjoy being. So why wouldn't you take them to church? Of course you should. And so we find that we bring the children to church, but only Jesus can put them in the church as far as being in his family, in his body, a part of uh, his bride. And that's the work of the Lord Jesus. So I would begin to continue to, to build the church. Once in a while, I'd put one in, like I, I, a different one. I have one little block that had spots all over it. And this is a believer who has gotten contaminated by the world. Uh, they're sort of playing church. They used to be here. Uh, you ever heard of the sermon, uh, used to, Eustace and Wannabes? Eustace and Wannabes. Used to be, I used to do that, or uh, Wannabes is, well, I really want to be a good Christian, but right now I just don't have time. Well, if you don't have time, you won't be. And if you used to be, that doesn't help you right now. Used to and wannabes. But God wants us to do it now, to be a part of his family, not spotted by the world. And I'm wondering if you're here today and you're a believer and you're listening, but you look at your life and when's the last time you really took the time to confess your sin, to get right with God, to ask him to cleanse you, to fill you with his Holy Spirit. You know, that ought to be a daily experience where you turn over the controls of your life to the Lord Jesus. Your life is out of control, has been for a while. But you might do the right things, but oh my goodness, you have an attitude. Grieves the heart of God, spotted by the world. Oh, you, you quote, love the Lord. You're here some, unless you've got something else to do. Because the cares of this world have drawn you away. Reminds me of Demas. Demas would be one, perhaps was green if he was truly saved, but my, he was spotted by the world. Was he really a true believer? Maybe he left them because he never was part of them. But yet Paul seems to think that he was. But see, Paul even doesn't know his heart, only the Lord knows. So you're either a non-believer and you're pretending, or you're a believer and you're far out of fellowship, spotted by this world. Yet you're in the church. And if you're in the church and you're not walk with God, you don't help the church. You're a hindrance to the church, actually. You say, Pastor, what should I do? Get out? No, get right. Yeah, get right. You know what's right. We do what we want to do. So many people think, well, I, I should do this. One day I'm going to do this. The point I just read is that we are 
fitted together the fellowship everyone doing its part you can't do your part if you're not right with god you can't do your part if you're not right with one another you cannot do your part if you're not actively involved in the fellowship and the and the worship of the body of christ we find uh, more blocks are added and once in a while i'll take a look at a small one and a medium-sized one and and then we have a one block that's gold you say well, what's that a perfect christian no that's just what we strive for a golden uh christian to be the best i can be don't stop striving oh pastor i'll never be that golden christian well you never will be if you don't strive to be and none of us will be this out of heaven but like i mentioned last sunday don't lower the standard because if you lower the standard you lower the performance Keep your eyes on the Lord and let Him make you more like Jesus. What is God's predestined will? That we become conformed into the image of Jesus. Now, He's the golden believer, perfect in every way. And it's God's desire that we become more and more like Him. And then I'd move on and put another Christian. And then I'd take another one and, and I would um, have it white on the outside. But I had hinges and I opened up, it was black on the inside. Uh, that's what Jesus uh, would, how he would describe the hypocrite. The one who was religious but not right with God. On the outside, oh, they look like they're right. But on the inside, it's nothing but darkness. Hypocritical. Unsaved. Church member, because someone said, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But not really. Not in your heart. Sometimes you think, well, what would Jesus say? You know, Jesus would say, I love you. and Well, yeah, he would. And he does. But also, he might say, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. In the church building, but not in the church. What a sad thing. One heartbeat from a devil's hell. And right there where you hear the message, week after week, and you die alienated, from a loving, holy God. I would continue adding more strong believers and grateful for them as they're not perfect, they're striving, they're working together. And then I would paint one, one color, half of it, and other half another. And, and that's a believer that's hot for the Lord one day and he's turned off the next. Someday he's with you and sometimes he's not. You know, we have a lot of people in our church like that, more than we would like to have. I think we have one that's too many. But, oh, they're excited. They're excited for about a month. And then, where are they? Well, until they have a problem, they might not be here. They're just uncommitted. Never, never real sure what team they're on. I mean, we don't know and they don't know. Half and half. I've never heard of someone giving half their life to Jesus and being saved. So again, the problem is either you're not saved or you're out of fellowship with God. It's not that you're so worldly and spotted by the world. It's just, you know, who's, who's sitting on the throne of your life? Sometimes it's the Lord and sometimes it's you. Sometimes it might be somebody or something else. Half committed, partly committed back and forth, never knowing. You know, and then I, I add one more right in the middle, and it's green, looks like everybody else, looks like he's a believer and growing, and I have a long tongue sticking out. And that's the believer that has a loose tongue that would divide a church and set it on fire from hell. Are you ever guilty of that? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 19, verse 14. A loose tongue. James says it's fire from hell. It destroys. Sharp with the tongue. Right there in church. And how many churches have been destroyed by a tongue that's loose, wild, out of control. And after the damage is done, the damage is done. 
someone says like trying to say un unsay something is like having a a, a feather pillow and, and then just ripping it apart and letting the feathers go everywhere and then say okay put the feathers back well impossible to do feathers have flown around they've gone elsewhere what you've said has gone elsewhere and said something to somebody and somebody else said to somebody else and they stretched it and it's not true and there it goes divisive and so in the church you got to be careful for that you as a believer you need to be careful of it may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer so the Lord is the foundation, and we are to be fit together in good fellowship that we might function well, every person doing its part. Let me just read for you in verse 21. In whom the whole building being fit together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So you got to keep growing. You'll find out, you know what, here's my spiritual gift. Well, here's where I'm most effective. Here's what I've been doing wrong. Hey, here's where I've been doing right. I'm going to keep doing it. So we, we need to grow. That's the function. Grow to carry out what God has called us to do. If you would read in the book of Acts chapter 2, you will find the functions of the church. Five things. I'll just mention them. I won't go to the scripture, but you can read that. Acts chapter 2 and verses 42 through 47. We see the idea of discipleship. They continued in the doctrines of the apostles, the teaching of the apostles. You got, they continued. Listen, you cannot continue if you do not continue. Some of you have stopped. Not only is there discipleship, but also there's fellowship. And, and fellowship, uh, well, I think it all often includes food, but doesn't have to. It, it's just that union together of doing something together, uh, something that would benefit the kingdom of God, benefit the church of the Lord Jesus. There's fellowship, being together around prayer, and worship and uh, other ministries and so there is discipleship there's fellowship there's ministry how they cared for the needs of people there are people who are hurting that you can help with uh, sometimes you might have the gift of mercy and somebody just needs you to be there to um, listen to them and help them a little bit and just have a have a good ear not that you're going to listen and tell somebody else like that tongue thing but you would hear them and just say, I'm going to pray for you. Not give them a lot of answers, just hear them. Whatever, whatever spiritual gift God's given to you, you might use it to minister to people. It might be a tangible financial need, or it might just be a need of a friendship. So we find discipleship and fellowship, ministry, worship. They praise in God. You can praise Him, and you ought to praise Him by yourself. But it's a family thing, the family of God. Listen. God loves family. God loves his church, his bride. He's faithful. We ought to be faithful as his bride. He is faithful to his bride, and we should be faithful as his bride. Are you dependable? Are you faithful? And then we see the idea of evangelism, reaching out, bringing other people in to be a part of the family of God. And that's, that's the function of the church as we grow into that. We're fit together, working together. And then, let me just close with this in verse 22. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And, and, and that's the idea of a fellowship with God and the fulfillment of the church. The fulfillment of the church is that we might bring glory to God in all that we are, all that we do. The five functions of the church in Acts 2, under, understanding that we are building and we have a good foundation, we need to keep growing, uh, that we are the bride of Christ, we need to be faithful, and that we're the body of Christ, we need to function well. He's the Lord, He's in charge. He's the life of the church. We're dead without Him, alive with Him. He's the love of the church. He loves the church. As part of the church, do you love Him? Do you know him? Will you trust him? Will you right now say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for being so unfaithful. Forgive me, Father, for using you. And here I am, afresh. I yield my life, past, present, and future, all to you. I surrender all. Maybe you've never surrendered. Right now, you need to surrender. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. 
asking you to forgive me of all of my sins, trusting you to be the captain of my soul, the Lord of my life. Would you pray? Lord Jesus, Receive, I receive you today. Come into my heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, redeem those who are lost. Encourage those who are wayward. Bless those, Lord, who are walking with you, that they'll continue for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and see you next Sunday.